Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me Sula. It's time for another deep sky challenge. And this one anyone can see. You can see it with a big telescope. You can see it with a medium sized telescope. You can see it with a small telescope. You can see it with binoculars and you can even see it with your naked eye from a very dark sky sight on a clear moonless night. I'm talking about M33 or Messier 33, also known as the Triangulum Galaxy. It's a spiral galaxy and it can be found in the constellation Triangulum. And it's a perfect target for autumn. Some people call it the Pinwheel Galaxy, but there's already a Pinwheel Galaxy in Ursa Major, M101. So I always call it the Triangulum Galaxy. The Triangulum Galaxy, or M33, is 2.6 million light years away and it's part of our local group of galaxies. It was cataloged by Charles Messier in 1764, but most likely it was observed earlier by Giovanni Battista Hodierna in 1654. And it was also studied by William Herschel in the 1800s and it was one of the galaxies Edwin Hubble studied when he determined that what were previously thought to be nebulae were actually other galaxies. The Triangulum Galaxy has an apparent magnitude of 5.7, which is why I say you can see it from a very dark sky sight. I'm talking about Bortle 1 or Bortle 2 and on a moonless night because even though it's only magnitude 5.7 and within naked eye visibility, the light is spread out over a vast area of 70 by 40 arc minutes, giving it an actual size of 61,000 light years. So it has low surface brightness, but it contains 40 billion stars and it contains a very large star forming area that is 100 times larger than the Great Orion Nebula M42. It's called NGC 604, and it's located 12 arc minutes northeast of M33's nucleus, and it can be found right next to an 11th magnitude star. To find M33 is pretty easy. It's just 4.3 degrees west-northwest of Alpha Trianguli, which makes the point of the triangulum. I don't know why it's called Alpha because it's not the brightest star of the Triangulum constellation. But anyway, another way to find it is start at Miroc in Andromeda and head two thirds of the way to Alpha Trianguli, but it's not exactly on a straight line from Miroc to Alpha Trianguli. It's a little southwest of that line. And here's a star chart showing you the location of M33 and also of NGC 604. and Miroc, the orange star, and Almach. You're going to go to Miroc and go seven degrees below Miroc. Get Miroc at the edge of your finder scope and just incy wincy go down and it should be in there. M33. It's best seen in autumn in the northern hemisphere and into winter, our winter. To find it, start by trying to see it with your naked eye if you're in a very dark sky site, and I mean dark, dark, dark. If that's not possible, try with your binoculars. And if you still can't see it with binoculars, try a small telescope at low magnification because you need a big field of view to see this large object. Once you locate it and see it with your telescope, then you'll want to magnify to around 100 times magnification, and then you should be able to see spiral structure in the galaxy with two prominent arms and a brighter core. After that, see if you can see NGC 604, the nebula within M33. Disclosure, I've only seen M33 one time with my naked eye, and that was from a Bortle 1 site, Big Bend National Park in Texas. I have seen it from my driveway, which is sort of a Bortle 3, but conditions have to be very good. I'll try with my naked eye from the driveway tonight if conditions are very, very good. And by that, I mean no moon, no clouds, and good transparency. And then I'll try with these 15 by 70 binoculars and then with this 90 millimeter refractor. I've seen it before with my 10 inch reflector and with SWAN, my 15 inch reflector. And with those telescopes, I have seen the spiral structure, but I think you can see the spiral structure with the smaller telescope, maybe even this one, if it's dark enough. And I'm sorry, but you will not be able to see this object if the moon is out or if you're viewing from a light polluted area. But I'll be back after it gets dark to try to see this spiral galaxy, M33. It 
It's a beautiful evening for stargazing. I've been out here oh, 30 minutes trying to see the Triangulum Galaxy with my naked eye. I can't see it. I can see the Andromeda Galaxy, but it's magnitude 3.4 and the Triangulum is magnitude 5.7. So I don't think it's dark enough here in my driveway. So I'm gonna get out the binoculars now and my refractor and give those a try. <laughs> I see the Triangulum Galaxy with these 15 by 70 binoculars. Yes. It just looks like a hazy, elongated patch. Um, very faint, very faint. And I can't see any structure. And since I can't magnify, I don't think I ever would with these binoculars, but I saw it. Now, because of the field of view of binoculars, I could fit alpha triangula in the same field of view with the galaxy, so that helped me to pinpoint the location. Nice. Now I'm gonna get it in the 90 millimeter refractor, and once I get it in there, I'm gonna magnify to see if I can see any structure with the 90 millimeter refractor. Okay, I'm only at, I think, 30 times magnification. So I don't really see anything, but I know I'm in the right area. So I'm gonna magnify some more and see if I can see it. Let me go get a different eyepiece. This one is 20 millimeters. This is a 540 millimeter focal length telescope. So maybe I need a six millimeter. Be right back. I've been going a long time because <laughs> I took that 20 millimeter off and put in the six millimeter and it weighs a lot more so it became imbalanced. So I had to shift it up and then I had to find it again with the 20 millimeter and then I went back to the six millimeter <laughs> and I looked at it before I turned that light on to give myself a chance. And this is at 90 times magnification and I can see the halo and that it has a slightly darker core I don't see a spiral arm, but I can make out the core, and that's pretty good, I think. I think I need to magnify a little bit more to see if I can see any structure. Okay, I put a four and a half inch eyepiece in that puts me at 120 times magnification, and um, as you know, when you magnify, the object becomes dimmer, but I couldn't see any spiral structure, but I do see the brighter core and the halo. So that's pretty good with a 90 millimeter refractor and 120 times magnification. So I think I need to get out the 10 inch Dobsonian to see the spiral arms and NGC 604. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, I have located it, um, but they just see a smudge because I'm only at 50 times magnification. So I'm gonna increase the magnification and look for the spiral arms and then uh, look for the um, uh, nebula NGC 604. Let me get a different eyepiece. Be back in a second. I'm gonna turn that light off and have a better look at it. <laughs> I saw in GC 604, I saw the spiral arms Beautiful, beautiful galaxy. I had to study it for a long time to see NGC 604. And it's pretty hard, but the spiral arms weren't that hard as long as you're in a dark sky site. It's a pretty, pretty galaxy. 
<laughs> I saw the spiral arms, I saw the spiral structure, I saw the nucleus, and I saw NGC 604. <laughs> it's a good day. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I could not see M33 with my naked eye from my driveway because it's not dark enough here. You have to go to a very, very dark sky site, but if you're ever in one, give it a try. And I saw it with 15 by 70 binoculars. Um, not very well, it was kind of like a smudge. <laughs> I saw it better with the 90 millimeter refractor where I could magnify, but I saw it best in this 10 inch Dobsonian where I could make out the spiral structure and I saw NGC 604. <laughs> so you can see it with binoculars and a small telescope and if you're willing to go to a very dark sky site, try to see it with your naked eye and let me know if you do. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see y'all in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off. <laughs>